All right, what's next on the list? All right, um, Sam Wilson, ex-lovers. <laughs> okay, welcome back to CT Scan episode eight. Today we do not have a guest, but we have plenty to talk about today. Yeah. Um, kind of exciting. It's almost our one month anniversary here. Wow. <laughs> And the haters you, said we wouldn't last yeah. long. <laughs> Some of you didn't believe us when, uh, <laughs> yeah, when we said we were gonna do this. But um, I've been pretty impressed. We put them out almost twice a week. Yeah. For every week so far, so that's eight episodes, I believe. Right on. <laughs> yeah, right on. Um, so over uh, a, a, a couple of weeks ago, from when this will come out, I asked Instagram. Um, if they had any questions or topics for us, and so today we are gonna go through those. So we just start off with the first one then? Yeah, I All guess right. so. All right. Uh, my cousin Felicity, um, she asks, why are boys so difficult? <laughs> well, it depends on which way we're being difficult in. Because yeah. guys can be difficult in a lot of ways. But girls can be difficult in a lot of ways. In too. a lot of more ways. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone always thinks the other gender is yeah. weird. <laughs> but when, okay, when do you find guys to be difficult? Um, like me personally, or like yeah. when I could see, like when a girl can see them. No, like different. when do you see it personally? Because uh, there's so many ways that like yeah. we're supposed to see it, and like that's just like the stereotype. Like guys can't pick up on hints, mm-hmm. or guys just like don't understand things as well, or blah 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 blah. Yeah. No emotions. Well, I think part of like picking not picking up on hints is one thing that bothers me. Bothers me is when they're really stubborn. Mm-hmm. You know, like when um, you know, you're trying to explain your point of view. And they don't really listen, and they're just talking about their point of view, like, the entire time. Yeah. Um, So, that's one thing that's bothering me. What about you? Well, I don't know. There's nothing I can say, like, designated to guys as a whole. Mm. But, like, there's definitely certain things that, like, other guys do that bother me more, that I see more present in guys. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like guys are a bit more attention uh, hungry than girls are. Oh, I guess you could say like if you're hanging out with a group of guys, it's usually a guy is going to be the center of attention. I feel like than a girl, mm. unless you're unless with like a girl has a big personality. Yeah. yeah, or if there's more guys than girls, because then no wait, yeah, because then there's going to be a girl that all the guys are focused on <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do agree with that. I think boys in general are more attention hungry. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting to see though, because I'm always curious, like. If you get a group of guys together and a group of girls together, which one will bond more quickly together? Because mm. I feel like sometimes guys like can just get along so much easier sometimes, and girls can find a lot more drama. I but then do again, agree like, with that. That is like almost like a stereotype that you hear yeah. about. But like I've had almost zero like drama or issues between all my guy friends for like most of my life. I mean, there's always things that come up, but usually it's because a girl is involved with it. Yeah. But when it's just guy <laughs> and a guy having a problem about something, it's resolved either super quick or it really doesn't matter at all. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, you know, like you were saying about like a group of guys versus a group of girls. I think that up front girls are a lot more, um, you know, welcoming and mm-hmm. inviting and you know, they, they'll come up to you and introduce themselves. Oh, whereas totally. guys almost never do that. But yeah. guys, like, almost bond with what they don't say sometimes, you know? Yeah, no, I can see that. Um, like, my buddies at SOAR, I, I think I'll mention SOAR a couple times yeah. here, but <laughs> um, if they're listening, I love you guys. Uh, <laughs> oh, you want to explain like, what SOAR was exactly? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So SOAR was this was camp I went to at BYU over the summer for um, ethnicity people. <laughs> Ethnic people? <laughs> Ethnic people. It okay, was okay. mostly Hawaiians. Um, uh, Samoa, you know, the Islanders, um, and there were a couple black guys and a couple Asians, and so I, I'm half Asian, so I went, and it was awesome, it was like one of the best weeks of my summer, mm-hmm. um, and so you're in a kind of, it's it's kind of like EFY for those of you who have been there, so I was in this group of a bunch of guys, and um, at first we were like really quiet, but we like, we kind of got along, you know, mm-hmm. I, I feel like we just had a connection somehow, Yeah, and um when it came to like talk, then we were able to, you know, feel like we were buddies already. So, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'll never be able to know what the com- camaraderie of like a girl and a girl will be like. Yeah. Cause I am male. Yeah. <laughs> so never be able to know that. So I can't necessarily, you kind of can't cover them. this topic, I guess yeah. as well. As so I why to. are boys so difficult? Felicity. Um, it's a great question. Sorry, we can't answer it. Some boys are <laughs> difficult. Some are less difficult. Everybody's difficult in their own ways. Exactly. That's all I have to say. All right, next uh, topic, Peach. Shout out to Peach. She said, talk about me. 
Talk about Peach. Well, let's see here. When did I meet Peach? Peach I met Peach. Sucks. Just kidding. <laughs> Just I met Peach at some random party when I hung out with some PG kids one time. Mm-hmm. I think there was like a bunch of new people there, but I can remember her name because it was Peach, mm-hmm. you know. And that's about it. And then we ended up hanging out a couple other random times. All right, that's about all I know about Peach. Yeah. Just kidding. Peach is really fun, Peach cool is girl. Awesome. Yeah, um, I met Peach when some guys wanted to uh, set me up on a date with her, and it was fine. I mean, we didn't actually go on a date, but we hung out, and um, we got to know each other, we're friends, never really went any deeper than that. Sorry, Peach. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm sure she would have some words to say about that if you were here. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, let's move on. Sorry, Peach. That's all you get today. <laughs> Sorry, Peach. Uh we had a lot of people say that, so I'm just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also had a lot of people say they wanted to be featured. Uh, don't worry, guys. We'll you all get, get a you. chance. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully, if we, you know, have time. Um, yeah, some buddies I have uh, that run Cross Country for Farmington, they want to be featured. Mm-hmm. And also that would Farmington? be awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. But, oh, like, cool. it's an hour-long drive. Yeah. <laughs> just for this little 20-minute podcast. But, I mean, it would be awesome to have you guys. Uh, if you guys feel like that. Yeah, and build the fan base, you know. Yeah, down in, down in Farmington. Finally we, get we it into triple guys. digits. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's next on the list? All right. Um, Sam Wilson, ex-lovers. <laughs> oh, ex-lovers. Ooh. Hmm. I could go on for a while about <laughs> that. But as a preface, I have no beef against any of my ex-lovers. Though I don't really call them lovers, just... <laughs> Just people that I've been in relationships with in the past. I don't even know where I would go with that because I don't yeah. want to like, like go off about things. Because there's definitely things that happened that like I wasn't happy about, of course. Mm-hmm. But like in the end, I've like tried to like settle all the bad blood. Yeah. With like yeah. the people that things have gone awry with. Yeah, but, I agree with that. But okay, so here's a topic about exes <laughs> then is like, or just uh, exes in general. Like, a lot of people that I end up, like, having anything with, as soon as it's over, there's never anything else, you know? There's always the people who say, like, no, we're going to just be friends after. Yeah. And that only works for, like, a select few people, yeah. you know? I would love to say that I'm great friends with, you know, people that I used to, you know, like, mm-hmm. but it really never happens. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I wish I could sometimes, but it's almost... I don't know. It's really hard. It it's might take weird. a couple years yeah, to a point yeah. where you just can laugh about it because it was just in high school and you like really are over it because you're living such a different life now. Yeah. But right now it's still, I don't know. You're still kind of in the same scenario where like everything went down, like mm-hmm. same scene setting, I guess, whatever yeah. you could call it. I will but, say, um, sorry. No, you're good. I will say that like, as far as that goes, like anyone that like I used to like that does feel like we have beef, um, <laughs> I don't feel like that. I've had, so, um, yeah. If, if you do have a problem, let me know. But uh, <laughs> We can hash yeah. it out later sometime. Yeah, anything else on that? Um, No, just don't do stupid things in a yeah. relationship. And <laughs> Yeah, I'll be I honest. I've, I've not been the best with I relationships. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, my buddy from AF, Ashton Heisel. I, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce your last name, but I'm pretty sure. So, Ashton, he wants to know a dream place to live. Mm. I think that's a great question because it's not just vacation, you know? Exactly. Like, where would you live? Yeah, because I could vacation anywhere, you know, yeah. for a week. Because, oh, yeah. like, I'll try it all once, yeah. you know? Yeah. Just and it can't world. be that bad for just a week. Mm-hmm. But, like, having to live somewhere is so much different. Cause, you know, like, that's your home base. That's who you're surrounded by. That's where your whole life is going to be centered, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm already hooked on Utah as it is, you know, like there's so much around here to do from like mountains, the lake to yeah, everything, you know, yeah. and you get like, you get a full, um, uh, seat, you get full seasons each time, yeah, you, you know, like the summers are seasons. beautiful and yeah. the winters are awesome. Uh-huh. As today was a snow day. Woot, woot. Oh yeah. That's, pretty... that's why we're recording right yep, now. So. It's a pretty crappy <laughs> snow day, but yeah. whatever. Um, um, so I don't know. I'll try and think of some as you. Talk. Well, yeah, I, I, I agree. Like, it's kind of hard to know where you might want to live because all I've lived is Utah, mm-hmm. you know? I will say, like, I'm not sure if, like, the country life is for me, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't I can't see myself living on a farm all alone, you oh, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would m- almost rather live in a huge city. Actually, I definitely would rather live in a huge city than mm-hmm. a tiny farm town. 
Um, just where things are busy and, you know, I have a life going on. Yeah. And I think I like that too, just cause I need like my life to be changing up constantly. Like mm-hmm. I need the change of pace when life gets like too routine and like everything's kind of the same. It gets pretty cut and dry, you know, yeah. but then again, sometimes like the busyness of a city can be like so much, but then again, that's why we take vacations, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I'd rather live in like a city and take a vacation to somewhere isolated than live somewhere isolated and take a vacation to a city. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I guess I know places where I would not live, but I would say there's a lot of things I haven't ruled out. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty open to it. Honestly, like wherever I'm taken to in the end, like Mm -hmm. I, I really don't have plans for the future at all. Like where I want to live or what I want to do because I don't know what I want to do. Yeah, and I want to be flexible. Too. Yeah, and like what you do will kind of determine where you end up, like where it's exactly. best for you. Yeah. yeah, being flexible. So I'm just open to anything, honestly. And yeah. whatever comes my way, I'm willing to give it a shot. Exactly. Unless it's really crappy. Yeah, so that kind of leads to this question by my bud from Soar, actually. Ah. Uh, Chris Wilbert, he asks about, uh, to talk about college and future. Mm. Where have you applied? I only applied to one school. Really? Yeah, I only applied to BYU. (laughs) (laughs) All right, BYU. Um, Yeah, Um, so hopefully that works out. But if not, you know, like, I can just go to UVU or, like, I can just send in my GPA and ACT to SUU later and all this and that. College isn't really a huge thought for me right now just because I've already started my mission papers. Mm, So I've got that going. Yeah, yeah. And I really am not a big future thinker, you know? I am, like, a big picture person, though, sometimes, you know, like... Because so many days I'll be like, oh, what is my purpose in doing this today? This all feels so pointless, you know? Like, where is this taking me? But also at the same time, I'm not, like, worried about the future either. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I I kind of agree with that. Um, I've applied to three schools. I've applied to BYU, Utah State, and the U of U. Mm Mm-hmm. And I would say out of those three, I would probably go to, well, actually, I would definitely go to BYU Mm -hmm. um, out of those three. But I would say I'm flexible. I, for a long time, I, well, it wasn't like my goal, but I wanted to run in college. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I still might have a shot, you know, to like go walk on somewhere. Yeah. But it's just kind of as like, as I've kind of like turned, like seasons have turned, it's not cross country season anymore. I've kind of realized that. Maybe running isn't for me, especially mm-hmm. on the next level where it's so much more competitive and time yeah. consuming. So that's how I was with climbing because for so long I couldn't decide whether or not I wanted to like dedicate my whole life to climbing and the competitive sense mm-hmm. or if I wanted it to just be like something I'm pursuing right now. And that was the hardest thing for me is like because I couldn't make up my mind, so I feel like I can never like give in my all totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in the end, I'm glad I didn't because I feel like being a pro athlete like that ties you down so much oh, yeah. to just one thing. As with this sense, like, I still feel like I'm pursuing climbing pretty wholeheartedly and I'm still, like, progressing as much as I want and feel like I'm getting stronger. But at the same time, I'm doing so many other things between, like, this, for instance. Like, if I was competing as much as I am, I probably wouldn't be able to make this podcast. (laughs) I'm making videos. I love my social life, you know, and Mm -hmm. all this and that. So I like to leave it pretty open. Yeah, I 100% agree because there was a point during cross-country season where, like, literally everything I did was, like, Cross country oriented, oriented, mm-hmm. you know, because like I, I would never go out because I needed to get my sleep so I could wake up and run, you know, all these little things. You know, I was eating, yeah. making sure, being so particular. And I realized this is fun, but like, do I really want to be doing this for four more years? Exactly, because you know? I think it is really fun for a point, like in the moment, like. Uh, when I'm training for a huge competition, it feels so cool. You know, you just have, feel like you have this big purpose for this competition and just like winning it just feels like so much or something like that. And just, I don't know, I feel like I get a lot of fulfillment out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. But in the end, sometimes you, like, I can't remember who said it. I heard a quote somewhere that like, if you look into anything too much, you can find how pointless it is. You know, like any job, any profession, any yeah. sport, you can look at it deep enough and be like, this is so completely pointless. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And like, life is completely <laughs> pointless, honestly, if you think about it. Just watch this video one day about how <laughs> the world's going to collapse and the whole universe is going to turn into nothing, basically. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But what I've come to a conclusion to, basically with my future and like right now especially, is that the most fulfillment that I'm ever going to get out of my life is through connections with other people and by just like lifting those up around me. So whatever I end up doing with my future, I want it to be surrounded by people, whether mm-hmm. it's like something really cool like humanitarian work and going out and serving people a lot or something simpler like opening up a climbing gym and 
holding a bunch of events there, you know, getting people in, growing the community. Like just recently I started a climbing club and I took just three of them in the club climbing one day. But it was really cool because they weren't like all like super close friends already, but climbing itself brought us all together and I feel a lot closer to all of them already. Mm -hmm. And just I feel like life surrounded by people will be so much more rewarding than it ever will be without. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> let's see. Should we move on? Well, I was going to say, like, thinking of professions, it's like a big step, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like your education is like a big choice because, you know, you're going to do that for the rest of your life. You yeah, know? but at the same time, like, your profession isn't who you are either. I feel like in this like day and age for like kids or age, like whatever you do defines who you are, you know? Oh yeah. And yeah. like, but sometimes a career is really just a means to an end to provide for your family and provide for your hobbies that you really do like in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I oh, I'm sorry. Agree. Maddie. Yes. <laughs> All right. There you have it, Maddie. <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> that was uh, Nate Blickenstaff uh, replying to Maddie's question. If you guys listened to a couple episodes back, Maddie asked the preference, and the answer is yes, Maddie. Woohoo. <laughs> I was so confused. I'm like, what is he doing? Don't walk up right now. You're going to interrupt it. <laughs> totally forgot. Yeah, that's funny. What were we talking um, about? You are talking well, about oh, career and doesn't define you. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. what were you saying on that? Well, I, I mean... I feel like a career will, like, be a big part of what you do, but, yeah. like, I'm going to have a family, you know, I'm going to mm -hmm. have, like, I want to go, you know, still play sports, you know, mm -hmm. or, like, find some hobby that, like, consumes me and that I'm actually passionate about and yeah. that I'll want to do outside of my job, too. Yeah, and I know I won't care for anything as much as I will care for my family when that comes around, but you still need hobbies like that that, like, will help you out because climbing honestly keeps me stable sometimes, you know, like... <laughs> It just, I don't know. It's yeah, like therapy. I, yeah, I see what you're saying. You know, mm -hmm. like I would probably like not work out as much as I do, you know, mm -hmm. without running. Exactly. Anyways, um, <laughs> Ethan Avery wants us to talk about the ducks. The ducks? Do you know about that? No. The little rubber duckies that are appearing everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Okay, explain that to me because it sounds like you know about that a little so, bit. So, okay, Ethan Avery, he runs cross country. Uh -huh. um, he came up to me one day on a run and he was like, Clint you're going to start seeing these little rubber duckies everywhere. <laughs> and he said he, he bought like a thousand of them oh my gosh. for like 10 bucks or something really ridiculously cheap. And so they've been appearing everywhere. I don't really so, have much wait, to say about it. What is the point of it? The rubber ducks? Just a joke, I guess. I don't know. Just find the, the ducks. I, I saw something that's going to be in the yearbook. So, so there's a, a bunch of ducks of just littered them. around our school basically, but they're yeah. hidden. Yeah. Okay, because I saw I saw one of them way up in the lights in the commons. Oh yeah. Way up there, because I think Justin Meekum, throwback to episode two, <laughs> he yeah. threw one of those rubber ducks up on the lights. Hey. Oh. oh what? That's incredible. Okay. But I, I don't I know. I too. really haven't heard about the ducks much. I found one in my backpack, uh, <laughs> in my locker, and there was like some on the track and these little nooks and crannies. <laughs> wow, um, I yeah. really haven't seen them that much. I've seen the one. Well, yeah, I'll I mean, keep my eyes peeled for the ducks. <laughs> it's a great joke. What happens Funny. if you find one? Like, is that is it? <laughs> yeah, you just find one. I guess That's it. Not really a point to it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I have a story about ducks, though. Really? I was at Fat Cats <laughs> and, for a student council meeting, and me and my boy Derek. Got everyone else's tokens, and we got to a little claw machine that just had rubber ducks in it, and we were going crazy. I was going four for four, and I caught oh, wow. all of them. <laughs> we were catching so many ducks, and That's it was awesome. so fun. That's my story at the end. That's funny. All right. Um, let's see. My cousin Talmadge, who is the least important on the show? <laughs> oh. Well... Well, we both have our roles. Yes, we both have our roles. <laughs> Clint definitely carries in the dialogue, I will admit. Like, Clint transitions it really well, keeps it on topic. I kind of just throw in things to fill it in. Sometimes I feel like I'm a guest on the show and Clint's really the host. <laughs> no, no, I, I I definitely appreciate Tanner a lot. Uh, Tanner edits everything. Tanner, um, you know, throws it up on YouTube and Spotify, wherever you're listening to it. Um, Tanner also, you know, is extremely supportive of what I say. He always has a comment to make. So I, uh, you know, I, who's to say who's least important, you oh, know? <laughs> wow, that was touching, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> that was adorable. Um, let's see here. 
We are kind of running out of time here. Um, we could choose... Let's well, see. let's see. What we we have flings, Oliver Hatfield. <laughs> flings. Uh, Riley Welker, bullying is not cool. Bullying is not cool, though. I don't see much of it anymore, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I think there are little things that you could, you know, count as bullying. I think it's a lot more subtle than, like, what we all, like portray it as to be like yeah. you get so many oh, of yeah. these like anti-bullying statements or like but it's not like someone's shoving you down the hall exactly you know like you never see that <laughs> anymore at least at least where we go yeah if you see that report it yeah it's, it, not, it's cool. not cool and and don't be afraid to report it because it yeah. needs to stop i feel like bullying though for us at our school is more of a sense of like people talking behind your back people oh. spreading kind of rumors yeah, a lot more sure. subtle things that aren't so directly malicious that sometimes it can almost seem like unintentional because yeah. people can just fall into habits of just talking bad about people. And that's yeah. something that I realized like I used to do sophomore year is like because it's so easy to make conversation with people mm-hmm. when you're just talking bad about someone else. Yeah. And it's been something that I've tried to work on and like rather than like having my conversations drift there to like pull that away and like try yeah. and be an advocate for the good in everyone. Yeah. And I think another thing is like if you see it happening, then you know, confront that person because mm-hmm. they know that it's not right. You yeah. Know? Exactly. And- no one's like out there like no, I am pro bullying. Yeah, yeah, bullying is good. And you know, like even me, you know, if if I was talking bad about someone and someone said, "Bro, stop," then I would realize I'm talking bad about someone. Yeah, you and know? like usually, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I was doing that. I yeah. feel so bad now. Exactly. Yeah. So stand up. Um, yeah, just light just the world. Avoid that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cody living in Utah as a non-member. Couldn't tell you what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we should get someone on the show, though, and talk about we that should. for sure. Yeah, I, I think that is a great question that we should bring up to Cody. Um, exactly. And, uh, you know, I love Cody. I, I think, love Cody. I think he's, yeah, like, so much. he's, you know, a lot of the heart of Tippinogus. No, yeah, he's him, such you know? a good guy. Yeah, uh-huh. And I think one important thing about not being a member here is to realize that, you know, you still belong, you know, yeah. and we still want you around and we still want to hang out with you. And, and, and maybe, you know, you think that's weird and, and that we're weird, but, <laughs> and we're not trying to constantly convert you or anything. Yeah. Yeah. We like, just, we just want to be friends. So. Any of my friends that like are non-members, I've never tried to like mm-hmm. pressure them into that. Not to say that I'm not doing my duties as a disciple of <laughs> yeah, Christ, I mean, yeah. but not to say that Cody or like any of these people are out there like doing horrible things. Cody is such a good guy, you oh, know? Yeah, for sure. And like, honestly, and no one, you know, I, I know plenty of members that do way oh, worse things than Cody. Totally. Yeah. Totally. We could go off about a whole episode <laughs> yeah. about this, you know? Yeah. yeah we definitely... Not to put Cody on the spotlight here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, Cody... there are other non-members. Yes, oh, definitely. Yeah. Like but... two, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll definitely bring that up more and discuss it further in depth because there's a lot to unpack and talk about there. Yeah. So we have like two minutes left, but do you want to talk about flings? Uh, Oh, flings. I don't know if I have much to say about that. I don't know if I want to say much about that. (laughs) Flings are weird. Yeah. Part in the clock in the background. (laughs) Um, That goes off like every episode. (laughs) Usually. Yeah, I know. We always find it where it goes off on accident. Yeah. Um, Flings usually aren't as fulfilling as you want them to be. And Honest, they're never worth it. Yeah, they really. usually aren't. And it especially sucks when there's someone that's really cool and you're actually getting tight with and they screw it up by making it a fling. Yeah. Like they could have been kind of a dope homie to, you know, to have, but oh well. Yeah. Um, I mean, not to say, like, I'll be honest, I probably have never done it one, but like, uh, like, like just a one time, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, um, I, <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes it gets to the point where you're like, hmm, mm. <laughs> you know? But it's, it's never worth it. I'm always glad yeah, that, that no. I, I have the self-control. As I always <laughs> say, connection over an erection. <laughs> Those, are, Those are words to live by. I'll yeah, that's honest. one of my proudest <laughs> quotes that I've come up with. Connection so, yeah. over erection. Exactly. That's the new motto of CTV. Live the life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Just kidding. Um, nothing else I could really say on that. I don't know. Friends are... More fun when you're not sucking face. Yeah. But, like, for reals, though, like, the nights where, like, I've made out with people and I've come home, like, you know, <laughs> I don't know if that was really fun. Like, I could have done so many more fun <laughs> things than that. Like, I talk about this with my friends sometimes because, like, you get stuck in this cycle of thinking, okay, this is going to be fun. Then you come back, like, that wasn't <laughs> fun, and then you want it again. Like, no, it wasn't fun because yeah. there's so many more fun things that we can do out there. Like, talking about what Christian was saying about, like, going out there and living your life to the fullest, there's so many more fun things that we can do from, like, 
I don't even know, like exploring abandoned places like I do with Christian all the time, to playing kickball in the church, to just hanging out with a bunch of people and watching The Bachelor like we were doing the <laughs> yeah, other day. Yeah, making fun of The Bachelor. That was really fun. I it really fun. enjoyed that yeah. night. So, um, yeah, just, just thoughts on flings. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, I'll, <laughs> I'm just not the person to talk to about this, I'll be honest. <laughs> we could um, get some people on there for this. Yeah, we but. definitely could. <laughs> All right, so we're out of time, but for our little uh, fun question, what, what do we call it? Last episode. I oh, uh, lighthearted question. Lighthearted question. To end it all. Yeah. Um, end it today. Sam Glad asks, when you're dressing, do you put on the pants first or the shirt first? <laughs> to me, this is obvious. And if you say the wrong answer, I will be <laughs> very weird enough. On three, ready? <laughs> okay, one, one, two, two three. three. Pants. Okay, okay good. good. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say that that happens every time, but like... Yeah, that like happens Like 99% every time. of the time, I put on my pants first. And no, when I'm getting ready for <laughs> church, I'm not wearing anything, and I get like my undershirt on, then I bund up my white shirt, and then I got on my tie, and then my suit coat, and then I put on my underwear. Yeah, see, that's, the thing. <laughs> that's so weird. <laughs> I could never do that. Like, even with Sunday pants, like, well, okay, so first of all, like, when you put on your shirt first, and then your pants, your, your shirt gets tucked into your pants, you know what I mean? Yeah. And even when it's Sunday... And, like, I am tucking my shirt into my pants. Mm -hmm. I still put on my pants first. It's just a habit, you yeah. know? So. Same. I just but, feel like it would be really weird. To just yeah, to definitely. Wear a shirt. But, <laughs> what is it? Like, for me, I only have, like, three pairs of pants that I really like to wear. I have a brown <laughs> pair of pants, a black pair of jeans, and then a normal pair of jeans. Mm -hmm. And I just, usually, two of them are dirty. So I just grab whatever <laughs> one is there, and then I pick the shirt that goes with it for the day. Okay. So, yeah. like,. I'll and, be honest, uh, that sounds exactly like my routine. And, uh, and for most of the time, like, when I'm home alone, like, I don't wear a shirt. I don't not wear pants and wear a shirt. That just is so much weirder. <laughs> that would be really That's weird. just so weird. <laughs> just wearing a shirt. Okay. All so right. There's well, your Well, thanks answer. for your questions, guys. Be on the lookout for another one of these, you know, maybe in a month or so. Um... And mm -hmm. thanks for the first month. You know, it's I'm not fun. exactly sure how many listeners we have. It's kind of hard to tell with all the different platforms we're on. Yeah. But I really appreciate those of you who listen to the episodes regularly. I'm sure Tanner does too. I really do. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> right on. Right on. All right, we're done. <laughs>